Hey, listen, 90% of the people I've ever met probably will never do a thing for me, but it's the 10% that make the difference. Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger, and boy, do I have an awesome episode for you. Today, I'm chatting with Shane Sams of Flipped Lifestyle about membership sites. I believe that membership sites, membership programs, communities are the replens the replenishables of the info marketing world, because you got that recurring income. You're able to serve a community of people, give them great content and lead them. And you got that recurring income built in. And Shane is the master at this. And so we had an awesome conversation. I learned a ton from him about just um, his story, his beginnings and how they created uh, several membership sites, even sold one of their sites. And now they serve hundreds of people, hundreds of just regular people like me and you uh, in a community where they're learning, teaching those people how to take something that they're passionate about, experienced in, skilled at, and turn that into online recurring income. We had a blast chatting, and I know you're going to love this episode. Here it is. Ryan, man, I am pumped to be here. This is going to be awesome, dude. Let's go, man. Yeah, I'm fired up, man. And we literally just met online and through Dan Miller. So guys, crazy story. Um, I, Sheila Davis, who runs Dan's social media, does mine also. And we had a, a, a planning call and we were, I was asking her about, so they're killing it over in the Eagles group. They're doing a great job with their membership. And, and Sheila's a lot of the mastermind behind that with their team. And so I said, Sheila, let's, let's talk because I want to know some of the things that you guys are doing behind the scenes with Matt membership groups, because I want to employ that in our legends group. And so she said that she listens to your podcast and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I don't know who Shane Sams is, but I immediately um, started listening and, and really seriously been binging on both of your podcasts, the Shane Sam show and the flip lifestyle podcast. And I'm grateful because then I emailed Dan and I, the more I listen to your, your, just your guys' story, I'm like, I need to know these people because there's, there's so many similarities in your same heart. And so I, I messaged Dan and said, Hey, you know, could, could you introduce me since I know that you guys are friends and gracious as Dan is said, yes. And I get an email like within minutes from you and your, your assistant. So that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Crazy. Like, I, I don't vet Dan Miller's emails. <laughs> like whatever Dan says, I, Dan, if you're listening to this, man, I just, you just send me whatever you want to send that's me, right. man. I'm all in baby. Yeah. Right. When Dan Miller says something, you go do it. And Amen. It works out. All right, man. That is so true. But and I want to get into your story, Shane, because I want my audience to know you. I know they're going to love you because of just um, just everything that you guys have built and your uh, your believers. I have a lot of Christians in my audience too. But you are from a small town. I'm from small town, Indiana, a little town called Pendleton. Um, with your story with Jocelyn, you liked her first. The same here. You guys waited seven years to get married. Ours was five. We both married up. Um, Big time. Yeah. I outkicked my coverage. So <laughs> and I'll let you tell gone. your story too, because I want to hear anything <laughs> you will obviously talk about your business story, but um, weird. This is weird and little, but you, you and Jocelyn cross paths in a stairwell in a dorm. I, I if I remember right, That's Maureen right. and I cross paths in a hallway at a church. Um, <laughs> that was also both the first time that we had talked to our spouses. We had seen them before, but the first time that we said anything was in, in that first, that crossing. You're a history and poli sci guy. That was my majors in Hun- at Huntington University. You're kidding me. That's no. what I majored in at Kentucky. Education, yeah. poli sci, and history. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, I wasn't education. I was just a bachelor of arts. Um, I had no idea what I was going to go, or bachelor of science. I don't know. Arts, I think. I had no Something idea. Something you're not gonna, using now to make money. Not That's using it at all. I know, right. <laughs> but I did with the, with the political stuff after that. I, I didn't really use it, but it obviously got me those jobs. Um, you had, um, you were listening to Pat Flynn and came into the house after listening to one of his episodes about, um, that was, I don't remember what you said his episode was about, but it, it was literally his story about how he started making, he oh, got that's fired right. and made money the online. Yeah, man. Okay. And you ran into the house telling Jocelyn, Hey, I found out how we can do this. And she was like, no, that didn't. <laughs> yeah. The same with Mulane. Those that know my story with the auction, I told her we need to bid $1,500 on this. Um, or actually, no, the back to before that was when I said we want to sell furniture on Craigslist, do it full time. She said, no, you need to go get a job. So we both have practical, more practical wives. 
And they also, the, the risk when you, that event in San Diego, you spend a couple grand to go to that. And that's similar to my story with taking the risk on the $1,500 on that auction. I, I didn't just take a risk. Like I bulldozed the runway. Like, you know how you like to say you got, you know how you say you got like a runway. Like I had six yeah. months of runway before I was going to have to go apply for jobs again. Wow. And uh, it'd be like, if you had an airstrip and you just said, let's just bulldoze the last quarter of it. Let's just do that see what happens but uh it all worked out the risk it reward did. baby it all worked out it's worked out for you i've loved listening just to your story as i'm your, your, with your podcast but tell my audience about you how you got started let's go back to even you know you know some of the your football days and how you quit your job just anything you feel like would be yeah relevant to my yeah man so story. uh you know so yeah i met my wife jocelyn back at the University of Kentucky in like 1998 or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. We were a stairwell. And I actually told my friends I was going to marry her the night. I, I was going out with my buddies, uh -huh. uh, probably to chase other girls. I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> you know? And like, and we were going out and I was like, man, I just met the girl. I think I'm going to marry that girl. I'm like, I don't know how I know this, but I, yeah. I just knew it. Yeah. And uh, ended up, we got, uh, we got married. Um, I went uh, back to school. Uh, actually to get like a, a degree in like athletic director, football, uh, sports coaching, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, ended up getting a graduate assistant position at West Virginia University. Um, so I actually got to go coach college football a little bit at West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Knew I loved football, wanted to be around the game, didn't want that lifestyle. Right. Um, it was just daylight till dark, seven days a week. My, my uh, Rich Rodriguez was my head coach, and he literally told us in the staff meeting in July, he said, uh, hey, guys, hope you've had a good July, uh, June because uh, you're not going to see your families until uh, February when recruiting's over. So, you know, it was, it was a wild first couple of years being married because Jocelyn was working yeah. corporate and traveling. And uh, yeah. I was on the football thing and she, and people were like, how's married life? And we're like, I don't, th I don't know. We don't Never see, see each other. other. How do the guy, how do guys do that? We're, we're both family guys. How in the world you just must have to really, really, really love football to be able to do that with you. you know, if you have kids. I, I don't think when you're young and you get into the game that you're, you're, I think you're blinded by the ambition. You think you can handle it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, I'll tell you what got me out of it, man. Uh, there was a guy there, a Dan Miller like guy. I mean, just uh -huh. wise, just a great dude, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, his name was Bill Stewart. Uh, he's passed away now, but he was the assistant head coach. Ended up being the head coach of West Virginia, and I got a job at Eastern Kentucky. I was about to leave, and um, you know, I'd done a good job at West Virginia. Everybody yeah. liked me, and you know, and he goes, "Hey, Shane, hey boy, come here, come here, buddy. Oh, Shane, oh Shane, oh." He, he looked like Dick Van Dyke. So imagine Dick yeah. Van Dyke saying. Yeah. That. He goes, hey, buddy, get in here in my office, man. Oh, congratulations. Going to Eastern Kentucky. What an opportunity. You're going to have more responsibility. Man, it's going to be good, Shane Sams. And he goes, shut that door, Shane. Shut that door. Shut the door. Now, he always talked like that for the time I was there. And I, went, but when I, she, I shut the door. I sat down. And Bill, uh, Coach Stewart looked at me and said, um, Shane, this is a big opportunity. I mean, his voice changed just like that. And he said, Shane, it's a big opportunity. I'm, I want to tell you a story, though. Um, you know, my son... I, you know, I've been coaching for years. My son's 10 years old. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, I did the math the other day. And um, I have missed three years of my son's actual days on this earth. Oh, my gosh. Recruiting football. And he just wow. looked at me right in my eye and said, hmm. I like you, Shane. Good luck at Eastern Kentucky. And, you know, we, we were one of the few GAs. Like, I was already married. Um, Jocelyn had a job. It was clearly obvious that we were, cared about our relationship with each other. And yeah. I, think, I think that he was trying to warn me to get out of the game. Yes. Right? And yes. Um, I'll, never, I'll never forget him uh, for doing that because I did. I, I said, hey, let's go coach high school football. At least we'll have a community. We'll have weekends, you know, or nights together. Wow. And uh, so that's what sent me back into high school football. That's what led me into my teaching yes. career and would eventually lead us into the online business that, uh, that we have now. So. Man, aren't you grateful for that advice? Oh, think gosh. If, if, oh. If, he, if, he, if he hadn't have done that, would you have continued on that same path and eventually yeah, like, yeah, man. down the road? Yeah. I had a buddy. I had one of the guys I worked with over there, a real connected guy. He called me a few months later. And was like, uh, hey, man, I know you're or maybe the next year. And uh, he was like, hey, man, um, I got a job you don't even have to interview for at Bowling Green University. You want it? It was literally like done deal. Yeah. And that was that was the fork in the road where I picked the high school path. So yeah. I mean, yes, I'm so grateful. So grateful I did not go down that rabbit hole, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I don't know where I would. I don't know where we would be at right now if he had not called me in his room that day yeah you know not going to movies with your son right not going to that's right, movies. Man. that's right man <laughs> not saying not, not hanging out with you on a friday at one right. o'clock you know what i'm saying yeah. um, 
But anyway, I, I so we, we go and I, I teach for 10 years. I was a head football coach for a while. I was a defensive coordinator for a while. Uh, living that good enough life, weren't making a lot of money, of course, as a mm-hmm. school teacher in Southeast Kentucky, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, we were just doing our thing and um, probably, man, would still be on that railroad track. But, you know, like a lot of people who – um, worked full-time jobs. We had to use daycare. Um, we had yeah. two daycares. My little girl went to one daycare. My son went to another. And um, we actually found out one day that uh, someone at my kids, my son's daycare was abusing him pretty severely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not like sexual stuff. It was like terror, like pure right. terror. Like they would, uh, he would have potty training accidents and they would actually lock him in a bathroom for hours at a time in the dark um, to do that. Now the, the day I found out, I didn't know exactly what was going on. I just knew that he had, he was trying to tell me something. He told me one of the workers scared him. Yeah. Cause he was um, three, right? I remember from your pot three years old. Yep. Three years old. He wasn't quite, he wasn't totally verbal enough to tell me exactly what was happening. He just told me that someone, uh, he did say something. I like locked him in the bathroom. He said it was for a long time. Didn't know what, but we didn't know. And we found out later in the newspapers, there was a lot of other stories. One of the, the lady that owned the place, um, Original, she ended up going to jail for some stuff. So, mm. pr- pretty awful, awful stuff. But that's that how morning, not to ta- that's how not to potty train your kids. <laughs> exactly, that is the opposite of what you should do. Yeah, and you know, you know what's funny is I, I never, I never um, allowed bitterness or anger to take over. I do believe that it was pure ignorance. Yeah, um, some of the stuff that was happening to him, they just people should people were being hired that shouldn't have been there. You yeah. know, um. But the day I found out school had already started and couldn't really get a sub. And, um, you know, and I asked my boss for the day off work and she basically told me, she's like, you know, I know your son needs you, but your job needs you too. And you're just mm. going to have to, you're going to have to handle your personal problems after work. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, and at the time, you know, it was like the choice was, do I flip this desk over on this person's head <laughs> or what do I do in this situation? <laughs> right. And, uh, but you know, but I, I, I actually was really a fearful. I, I, I believed her. I believed that she could, I could lose my job. I, I believed that I had to be there for, I, I had this weird brainwashed worldly mentality that, yeah, my job was as important as my kid. And, yeah. and that's kind of was the breaking point to where I, re- I realized that I had sold myself into slavery, yeah. uh, working for other people and yeah. that I, was giving up all the control and time and freedom over my life for like mm-hmm. what a paycheck where you got paid Friday and it ran out on Thursday, yeah. like uh, health right. insurance. I mean, come on, man. You know, about your retirement though. You're not. Yeah. Retirement, <laughs> you know, that pension that's definitely going to be there when the government's right. not going to spend it all. Sure. Yeah. That one. Yeah. No. I, right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't look back and say, Oh man, I'm glad that happened. Right. But, I do think that that was a point in my life where God was like, okay, this is going to happen to you, but yeah. it's going to take you where I want you to go. Yeah. You know? well, Romans eight twenty eight, 28 turns all things that, uh, for good. are good, oh. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, nothing, can, nothing formed against us can prosper, baby. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So I started, uh, yep. I started, I started looking, man, I started looking for ways to make my own income where I could become and stay self-employed. And that took me to that lawnmower, that fateful day. I was listening to the smart passive income podcast with Pat Flynn and, he told his story about how uh, he had created an online income after he lost his job. And Mm -hmm. it was funny because like a couple weeks before that, I was really frustrated and I was in a car with my wife heading out to Muhlenberg County, Kentucky to visit her grandparents. And I looked at her and I said, Hey, Jocelyn, I think I got a plan. What if I could get a hundred people to give me $50? And she looked at me and said, what? And I said, think about it. There's 7 billion people on the planet. If I could just get a hundred people to give me 50 bucks, well, like that's $5,000 a month. That's our take home pay for two teaching salaries. Yeah. Like that's 60 grand a year. We could quit our job. I, I think that's a good plan. <laughs> and my wife looked at me and said, Shane, that's math, not a plan. And I was like, she goes, <laughs> she goes how are you going to do that? I, I don't know, baby. I don't know, but it sounds good. So, <laughs> so, so then I'm, li- I, so fast forward a few weeks, I'm listening to Pat tell his uh-huh. story and uh, he created a PDF study guide where he was Mm going to help people pass the architecture exam yes put it on his website for 19 bucks got 416 people to pay him 19 dollars seven thousand nine hundred dollars in a single month wow and i thought that's it that's how i'm going to get 100 people to give me 50 bucks man i'm gonna take my god-given knowledge and wisdom and life experience Mm -hmm. and habits Mm -hmm. passions hobbies whatever it is Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna go put it out there in the world and i'm gonna help other people solve their problems with what i've experienced yeah. And, um, and that's what eventually would lead to the 
on yeah. my and business. That was the, the that first site. Was that the playbook site, the football playbook? No, the first no, the first website I had the first website I ever had was a site that was only designed to give away history workshops to teachers. Uh, okay, okay. And then Is I that also the one had where you a, made eleven cents on. Yes, that's yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then, that, yeah, and then I had a I also had a blog too. It was called a Toddler Apocalypse, and I was just being a dad blogger talking yep. about stupid things my kids did. Uh -huh. So like they, you know they'd rip the flower open and go all over the kitchen and right. mark up the he, uh, one time Isaac drew uh, an entire sharpie of ink all over his sister you know what I'm oh saying? my gosh that kind of thing that could um, probably work again with like tiktok and instagram maybe videos could. And stuff. i didn't have a, i didn't have those tools back in the stone ages of the internet you know right. <laughs> um but yeah the first work the first one i ever did was this website it was spammy it was like mm -hmm. i got a link it had a link to a website a, a worksheet uh -huh. for teachers it's called uh -huh. us history worksheets yeah com and i and i put spammy google ads and affiliate links all around it hoping someone would accidentally click something and give me money yeah and uh you know my wife man she was patient with me, dude, because I was failing so miserably at online business mm. those first few months and nothing was happening. I mean, no money, nothing, no traffic, mm. not at all. And, uh, dude, I, I seriously about gave up. I, I, the night I about gave up, man, I was so depressed and frustrated, man. And, um, and I, I literally, I prayed, I just said, God, is, is this real? Are these people yeah. like on making money on the internet? Because I ain't made a dime. I ain't made nothing. I made zero goose eggs all across the board, son. And, um, and I said, man, and I, I just prayed for a path. I was ready to go back to teaching and just be like, all right, fine. I'll just sit this road to retirement. Yeah. This is my, what my life's going to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that very night, man, uh, I checked my stats and, uh, and instead of zero, it said 11 cents, man. Ain't that the Lord's abundance? And that's uh, absolutely. And it was, God, and that was all you needed to just keep. It's like those breadcrumbs that in our paths that like, you know, even with my story with my wife, we had, um, you know, a long uh, dating relationship. I was in Indiana. She was in Texas and like just praying like, God, is this the right, is, am I supposed to be doing this? Because she wasn't giving me any signs that we were going to have a future, but I really believed in my heart chain that that was, that she was for me. And so that ends up bring, brings up a whole other weird thing. Like, not that you, you don't want to be like going after somebody who's, you got to know that that's, that it's God, you know, you have that's to right. really know. And so he would give me clues along the way. Like, yeah, you're just continue, stay the past, stay the course. Those God winks, baby. God, absolutely. Winks yeah, I, I love I, a buddy of mine the other day goes, man, I know why God, you prayed for a dime, man. You know why God gave you 11 cents? And I said, why? And he goes, so you'd remember to tithe. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that, it. Right. I was like, that's true. I never thought about that, man. Um, but well, what happened next was she got Jocelyn. She believed. I mean, as soon yeah. as we both saw that we could create something and money could come back, mm -hmm. it didn't matter how much it was. Yeah. Um, we knew that this was the way we needed to go. So the yeah. first site that we succeeded at was called elementarylibrarian.com. Yep. Um, Jocelyn, my wife was an educator. She was a librarian and we thought, Hey, well, Pat, made study guides for these people passing that test. What if we made the tests for the librarians and yep. made the worksheets and the study guides and we just put their class on autopilot. So, uh, Jocelyn, uh, started a blog and started a podcast called elementarylibrarian.com. It was really, we did it. We were able to build it really fast because I had suffered through six months of failure and learning how to do all the WordPress and all that. Mm -hmm. So it was like lightning quick. We were able to launch that site in like a month, yeah. you yeah. know? And then uh, a couple months later, she had about 200 people following her. Um, yeah. She opened her uh, product line of lesson plans for librarians. Mm -hmm. And the first month she sold them, we made $2,500. Wow. Yeah, which was one of our take-home pays as school teachers in Southeast Kentucky. Um, mm -hmm. So that, kept, that grew like crazy. Like we went like 4,000, 5,000, 9,000. Like a July of 2013 was uh, a year later, uh, we made $15,000. Uh, and then in August, we made $36,000. Then we had launched my football coaching site. It launched oh. uh, with a $7,000-something launch. Um, so all this money was starting to come in. It was crazy. Yeah. And um, we were like, you know, if we could, if we were doing this part-time, what would happen if we went all in on this? Absolutely. You know? And was so that, that September? That, September 27th September. was your freedom day? That's right, man. That's the day yeah. that I walked. I, uh, the, in that same office, my boss told me, um, I know your son needs you, but your job needs you too. I got to say, I don't need this job anymore. Don't need it. Right. And it was, it was pretty cool, man. But we, now, I, you know, I, I speed through that story a lot, but I want people listening to understand, um, you know, that was 13 months from the day we launched to the day we quit our job, plus six months of me trying to really figure out how to even build a website. I was yeah. doing this all by myself. It's impossible yeah. alone. 
Um, we had also made some moves when we realized the money that was coming in that we might have a chance to quit our jobs. Like um, we had this big 2,400 square foot house with an above ground pool is a nice neighborhood. That's a Kentucky, that's a Kentucky lifestyle right there. You know what I'm saying? The above ground pool. And, uh, but it was nice, man. We had a deck all the way around it. And, uh, and, uh, we, we had sold that house and we had downsized into like a older house, 1800 square feet, um, to, to free up revenues so that we could quit our, so we, we, yes. we did a lot of sacrificing to make sure yeah. that we could, uh, take action when we needed to. You did. Tell me about that. It was, so you glossed over, you got a couple hundred members and all that. And with, uh, how that happened so quickly, especially with the librarian site, what was the work involved and yeah. this might be the stuff in your blueprint right now for people that want to start a membership site. Um, and definitely we'll just say, guys, go to fliplifestyle.net and get into their program. They got a free trial of, of their membership community and blueprint on creating membership sites. But what take me into a day of what work looks like with you had the idea for the librarian site. She's yep. a librarian. How do you build yep. an audience yeah, yeah, for yeah. that? So there's only two ways to do it. Uh, roll up your sleeves or open your wallet. Like, and uh, there was nothing in our wallet. So uh, other than the yard sales that we were having on the weekends to fund yeah. the next hosting package, um, uh -huh. we had to roll up our sleeves, man. We had to get to work. So we would do things like one, we created content. We, we learned very early to batch content ahead of time. So Jocelyn would record eight to 12 podcasts at once. We'd schedule them out. She would write eight to 12 blog posts. Like this is all like a week of work to get it yeah. ready. And that freed us up to focus the other eight to 10 weeks on building audience. Yeah. The best place when you don't have a lot of money, if you want to build an audience, you've just got to go figure out where your people are already hanging out. Right. So at the time we found uh, forums, old bulletin board, board mm -hmm. style forums where, where <laughs> librarians were and educators were talking to each other yeah. um, on Twitter. Um, we actually found out there were some awesome hashtags where educators especially, mm -hmm. but uh, librarians specifically were talking about like struggles they were having in their libraries. And mm -hmm. we just went out and found blogs where other people were writing about being librarians. And we yep. would con Jocelyn would comment on those. Mm -hmm. and, and we literally built every single email, every single mm -hmm. traffic brick by brick in the beginning. Yeah. What does that look uh, like? So if you're coming on a blog, it's probably not going to be like, hey, everybody, I'm Jocelyn Sams and I'm opening up a new site. Here's my blog. It's probably, I would imagine it's more you're answering a question or you're saying yep. like, what a great blog post. This is awesome. I'm a librarian in Kentucky and I'm going to use Joining the conversation. Too. That's yep. it. Like, you know, like you join the Twitter feed and you talk and then you put your link in your bio. You go to the comment and you, t and you share. Um, but also too, like networking, like Jocelyn would, we would reach out to these people who owned these blogs and owned these forums and said, Hey, we're building something and we want to help your people. Yes. Um, Jocelyn would network through her podcast. I mean, she would reach out to like, um, she, Jocelyn actually got uh, the leader of the national library association uh -huh. onto her podcast. Now she's wow. connected with the person who has the list of all the librarians, right? Brilliant. Um, she would do things like reach out personally to libraries. I mean, schools are public records, so you can go yeah. and see who the librarian is. And she would sit and email them and say, Hey, I am Jocelyn. I'm, I have this website. I'd love for you to come and check it out. We have a Facebook page and she would do personal reach outs over wow. and over. Dude, on my football site, I remember laying in bed at night, and I was like, how am I going to find football coaches? And I, and football coaches, especially back then, didn't like Facebook and their jocks mm -hmm. and whatever. So, but they did use Twitter. Like everybody followed like ESPN on Twitter and whatever. Yeah. And like, I would lay in bed at night on my left side and I would lay there with the phone right up to my eyeball. And I would be, and I would type in the words football or coach or whatever in Twitter. Uh -huh. And I would scroll until I saw a picture of someone that was clearly a football coach. Like they'd be standing by a football player or on the field, or they'd call yeah. themselves like coach Rieger you know, yeah. and like, and I would friend them and send them a message. And I did that. I built like a following of like 5,000 coaches, Gosh. grassroots <clears throat> laying in bed what, okay. at night on Twitter. That's amazing. You're just, that's just hand to hand combat style. Hand to hand like, combat, you know, guerrilla warfare, baby. What are you, yeah. um, what, what kind of, what are you saying in that direct message to some, some stranger football coach you've never met? Uh, coach love to talk some football with you sometime. Check out my podcast coach tweet me. Coach, I, and I also too, I started my own forum. Uh -huh. So I, and uh, cause I was a member of a couple football forums and they were very active. And I was like, well, why don't I just own the forum? Yeah. Why am I coming to these people's forum? Yeah. So I would, so I would say, Hey, check out this new place where you can go talk football. It's free. Wonderful. And I would send them over to my forum. So I, I actually created ways to provide them value, not just introduce myself. Yes. Yeah. And my, I, I tell you what's crazy, man. Like I started my podcast 
it was called the coach XO show. It's not out there anymore. I don't have time to do it, but like, uh, but like it was called the coach XO show. And I was like, who am I going to interview? Who's going to talk to me? I, mean, I knew some college football coaches from my days doing it, but they were uh-huh. busy. My first guest was a, was a friend of mine from Sunday school. <laughs> Okay. And he was the seventh grade defensive coordinator at the local middle school. And I, and all I had was like this Roland microphone. I sat it in right. between us, terrible audio, could barely hear us talking. We we're talking yeah. about the six, two defense. It was stupid. You still and, have that uh, episode. I've got the recordings of it. You should sure. probably share that with your audience or yeah, something. I, that would should, be so- I should play, I play as a guest episode. Like this is how bad it can start guys. And you'll be all right. <laughs> um, but then like, so like, then like four or five episodes later, I was starting to get local coaches and then I ended up getting one of the college coaches. Then all of a sudden I was like, well, who would talk to me? I freak. I got Hal mummy, the old a legendary coach. This guy was on ESPN that weekend. He had, uh, he ran this thing where he never punted it, and they did a special about him for 30 minutes on college game day. And I was like, <laughs> I wonder if that guy would talk to me. And he did like the week Uh-oh. after he was on college game day, he was on my podcast. Wow. And like, and I was just like, all you needed was about 10 things to proof of concept to people that you were really doing it. And it grew yes. and it scaled like, you know, my 10th guest was on ESPN the day before he talked. Yeah. To me. How did you turn those podcast episodes and all those blog posts into an actual email list? Yeah, your 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 any content you create should always point back to your email list. So, like, I would say things like, "Hey, you know, uh, my name is Shane Sams. I'm the host of the show, but I also run the three five defense and call in high school football. If you'd love to get a, I I give you a free playbook if you go to coachxo.com slash playbook. And so my podcast always pitched that, so I was always filtering out the people that wanted what I was creating. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. And so yeah. how'd you go? So you got the, you had the library insight, the football site, and then how'd you, how'd that morph into now you have a group of hundreds of people that are learning how to do their own membership community. Uh, totally by accident. <laughs> I mean, it was like, like, I, I, you know, when we, when we quit our jobs, man, it was like, I mean, we were making more money than we knew was possible, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was totally passive income. I mean, we were just like, at that point we were working like, you know, maybe a week, every 12, you'd have to batch a bunch of content, Mm -hmm. but then most days were an hour, two hours, do a little customer service and you're done, you know? And we were just kind of cruising a little bit, uh, you know, on elementary librarian, on the football stuff, on everything that we were doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people, when you, when you quit your job in the middle of a school year in Southeast Kentucky (laughs) where jobs are scarce, right? Right. People, people look at you kind of funny, man. We got all these crazy questions. Like my mom, she was like, she cornered me one day, man. She was mad. She was like, you have flipped out. You have lost your mind. I cannot believe that you would give up that good job with those good benefits. And you've got babies, Shane Sams. You've got babies. You know, she was, she was mad at me. And then other people were like, Hey, are you and Jocelyn? Okay. Did you lose your job? Are you getting right. divorced? And I'm like, yeah. this is the opposite of divorce. No, I right. know we're not getting divorced. Um, but you know, sooner or later, like, uh, people asked us if we'd sold drugs. <laughs> I, I got that question well more than once. Oh my and, gosh. uh, it was crazy dude. And, uh, but I, I, some people started saying like, wow, what, what are you doing? Like, how can I do that? And, mm. A, a girl in our Sunday school class, her name was Lindsay. She said, um, she's like, nothing bad's happened to me, but I have a dream to homeschool my kids. Mm. But I can't do that if I'm working full time. Wow. So do you think I can make money at home and work online too? And mm. we're like, yeah, sure. We didn't know any better. Um, so we showed her exactly what we did. It only took her a few months and she quit her job. What was her niche? Uh, it was, it was the uh, education. She okay. was an education too. So she was serving, uh, she was sur- serving instructors with the same thing we did, like lesson plans and stuff like mm. that. And, um, and she would even sell them in like third party marketplaces or to other content creators like mm-hmm. us or anybody like, so she was kind of mm-hmm. like this putting it out there, you know? Wow. And, uh, and when she quit her job, man, her husband like came up to me crying after church one day and was like, you changed our lives. You, mm. cha- you changed our family's future, man. I'm, mm. He's like, I'm going back to school and we're paying for it with cash so that I can get a better job. And he's like, this is amazing. And, um, we're like, I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's awesome. And, uh, didn't know what to say, you know? Yeah. And when I got, and when I got in the car with Jocelyn after church that day, I was like, man, it like this online business stuff really changed our life. And it really changed their life. Like maybe we should tell other people about this, Yeah. you know? And I actually had not done it yet. So fast forward a couple months, we have a bad month our first really bad month when we're like, Oh, entrepreneurship is not all fun and unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> right. You know, right. Like there's bad things that can happen y'all. Yes. Uh, and so we had this horrific month, but we had had six months of expenses saved up and stuff. So it wasn't like a terrible thing, but it was like, you know, two or three of those in a row and yes. wheels are coming off the bus. Right. 
So we had about six months of runway. The sales went for two mm -hmm. straight months. I was like, wait, man, we got to get some help. We cannot keep doing this alone. Yeah. And, um, went out to uh, see Pat Flynn. He had, a, he was having a live event It was a small live event, 20 people, a workshop. You could come ask him questions. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like, Jocelyn, we should chunk off that last month or two and we should pay for this. And Jocelyn was like, yeah. Oh, you're crazy. I can't do, can't do that. What if we have 16 bad months in a row? Scarcity mindset was kicking yes. in, you know? Yeah. Um, so we got a credit card. Sorry, Dave Ramsey. I apologize. <laughs> and, uh, went out there and we, uh, went to Tim. We saw him. We got some great advice for our business, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I presented this thing like Pat, I think we have a different vibe. Like, you know, it's the same mm -hmm. thing you're doing, but man, you're a Filipino guy from California or something. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm an old boy from Kentucky. And like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're going to do this together, me and Jocelyn. So we're going to have our podcast mm -hmm. where we talk a man and a woman on the air. And yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, we, what do you think? And he was like, go for it. Just wow. total abundance. He was like, I'll do anything I can to help you. In yeah, fact, because he I'll had the Smart Passive Income podcast. That's right. So he could have thought, you know what? Um, no, Editor. that's my thing. That's right. That's right. But he did not. He said, man, there's so many people out there on the internet. Some people are going to like you. Some yes. people are going to like me. But the great thing is they're all going to get help. Mm. And, um, and then he had me on. My, my story is so entwined with his story that you know, he had us on his podcast. And we actually launched Flip Lifestyle on his show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We said, Hey, it's open. We opened it like the week before. Uh -huh. And then the next week we had a webinar and we got 120 people to join. 120. Wow. What was that first price point? I think $49 Nice a month and it's 197 now wow. Yeah, a month. So like, yeah, it was 49 bucks, man. And, um, it just mm. blew up. So, man, and that, it, it got, it got, and it got so fulfilling. Like it, it got big, but elementary librarian was still the, definitely the cash cow, the bellwether. I mean, it was just like, it was easy, you know? Yeah. We were about three or four years in flip lifestyle was getting up there. Like it was a great income and it was work great community. And we were starting to see success stories. Mm -hmm. Like we were starting to see other people, like, um, people like uh, we had people like uh, Rena Oriana. She came in early in our community and she started this dancing website, teaching people how to flamenco dance. I, I listened to that episode. <laughs> yeah. And she like blew it up, got 75 yeah. members. She quit her job at her, at her supplemented her studio. And then she had her own studio and yeah. she has 400 members in that membership now, man. Yeah. It's unbelievable. You think there's and any like, niche that you can't build a membership site around? I don't think so. I, 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 you know, I'm really starting to wonder because like we've had people like we got this guy named Kenny Troiano out in San Diego and uh -huh. he teach people, he teaches people how to raise backyard chickens. Oh that's like, that's all he does. And like he, uh, he has 200 people in his membership site. Um, we've seen artists like, uh, there's a guy named Evan Burst. He, uh, teaches people how to draw superheroes Gosh. and, uh, he's got, uh, he's his whole in living. He makes all I got a cr crazy idea. Membership. You ought to find like the crate. You ought to ask your community. What's the craziest niche you can think of? And let's oh, find I, I know it. Let's, I already let's know see it. if we can let's all together I, figure out. Let's create a membership site together or find oh, yeah, somebody like that we does do it this. As a, all right. So here's the one we'd have to beat. Okay. <laughs> so there's this lady up in North Dakota named yeah. Ter named Teresa Perlyberg. That's, okay. that's a real name. Perlyberg. Okay. Perly Perlyberg. 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 Okay. Like a city. Perlyberg. The city of Perlyberg. <laughs> Teresa Perlyberg. And Teresa. She joined our membership. She's like, I have this website called Bear, Melton, Bear Mountain Felting. And I, here's what I do. She goes, I raise sheep. We're like, okay, so you're going to teach people how to raise sheep. She goes, no. I shear the sheep. And we're like, okay, so you're going to teach people how to raise the sheep and shear the sheep. She goes, no. Then I take the sheep and I dye the wool. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to teach them how to dye the wool. She goes, no. All right, <laughs> what are you going to do with it? She goes, I take the wool and I use this technique called needle felting to right. turn the wool into stuffed animals. And she holds up a giraffe. And we're like, okay, so that's what you're going to do. And she's like, yes, I'm going to build a community of sheep shearing, wool dyeing, needle felting artisans <laughs> who do this for a hobby. It's not even looking for a job or anything. Oh my gosh. Like. And we're like, okay, she has 400 members. 400? She has, she, she has, she, her membership is so big. She bought an old school in North Dakota uh -huh. and, and she turned all the rooms into like little Airbnbs and she flies people into North Dakota uh -huh. to have bear, sheep shearing, needle felting seminars in person wow. in her own world headquarters. So like that, that's the one we got to beat. That's all. That's going to be so, tough. I have a friend that does that with Reese and suffice people come in and, and do wreath making with her um, sweet lady named Nancy Alexander that has a membership. Everybody, community. everybody hangs a wreath on their door. Yeah. Who, who is holding down a sheep just to get, the I know exactly. The needle no, felt it, right. Yours is way more, uh, that's <laughs> way more rare. 
But I, I like this concept though. We might need to work on this. Like, can we come? Can I come? What's the most obscure idea and see if I can get an audience and build it? Let's and like, it. if we that can would be do a that, challenge. That would be a great challenge. A challenge awesome. first. Would would you guys, you and Jocelyn, take that challenge on, or did you find somebody in your community? It's kind of a. I, I might get my team try it. I'm, that would be fun. I'm 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 past the point of starting anything new at this point <laughs> right now. So I'm kind of I'm 43 and I have two kids that are about to be teenagers. So yeah, I'm taking I'm taking a little break on the uh, new ideas for six years oh until they're gosh. in college. <laughs> so people yeah. come to me, Shane, and they want to know, like, you know, I'm interested in you know football, basketball. I also love knitting. Just throwing stuff out here. How do I pick my niche? Like, how do I know? which of these three or four things that I'm interested in, like I could see, you know, I'm, I would love to teach on this or just yeah. build a business around one of these things, but how do I pick? How, how do you direct people to finding their, their idea? You know, I mean, I guess that kind of depends on the why a little bit because everybody's running towards something or away from something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like I was running definitely away from something. So I, I needed, you know, we needed a path that could produce. And I, I think the best option that we had at the time was to really lean on, in on what our careers were because we could produce that fast, you know? Oh. And if it didn't work out, we always had the resources that we could use on our own time. So mm -hmm. I think, I think the, the more you're running from something, you lean on your God-given skills, talents, knowledge, the experiences that you have along the way, mm -hmm. um, your career path, you lean on those skills you're really, really good at. Even if they don't, if, you know, your, your, your passions and hobbies can come later, the thing you yeah. love, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I would say there. If you're, if you're, but if you're content and you're like, man, I want to add a side income of 50 people paying me 50 bucks a month. I want to... Mm -hmm pursue my hobbies and my passions mm -hmm. if you're running toward a goal and a dream like that like of, of doing of using your time where you want it and may, maybe making some money on the side that's really when those niches come in or those hobbies those passions those things you really really like yeah. you know yeah um, like football was a little bit of both for me that was really mm -hmm. cool um, but jocelyn you know three years after we had elementary librarian we sold it i mean because yeah. she just wasn't passionate about librarians it just had dominated and mm -hmm. made so much money so we actually sold that business yeah. um because she just wasn't a librarian anymore so she was ready to kind of yeah. move on to let it go and go to flip off style that's good so you pick your niche and then you start finding your audience is it pretty much the same hand-to-hand -hand combat at the beginning of that Depends. if you have no audience whatsoever you don't have there's any connections still, there's still that open your wallet yeah that's if, true if you're if let's talk got, about that one yeah if you've got disposable income you know it happens a lot faster Mm -hmm. um, you can put yourself in the right place to be at the right place at the right time. You can buy tickets to live events. You can go out and network and meet people mm -hmm. faster. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go get in front of other people's audience by making connections and being guests on podcasts, things like oh. that. You can buy Facebook and Google and Pinterest ads and you can get your message in front of people uh, mm -hmm. or maybe even hire someone um, who knows all about online marketing and yeah. then they can go run the ads for you. So, you know, there is always going to be both. Um, it is definitely um, a circle, you know, it's a yin yang. There's always going to be the roll up your sleeves. There's always going to be the open your wallet. Um, but if you can, if you can do both in the beginning, it's definitely going to help you succeed faster for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We tell our audience the same thing. We find where's your people hanging on, out online and off, especially online though, and just get in front of them and serve them just to answer yeah. their questions. And I'll tell you, man, I've been in this game 10 years now and, um, the rolling up the sleeves works the best. I swear it does, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, just think about me and you hanging out here today. Like, I, I made an, uh, I was in a, my pickup truck driving down to Del Hollow Res Reservoir last year. And uh, me and some buddies of mine uh, who are also online entrepreneurs, we uh, rent a houseboat every year and we go uh -huh. get away for a week, right? Just go out there on the, yes. we just, we disappear. No service, no nothing for a week, you know? And I made a, I was listening to this book. Uh, it's called The Dream 100 by Dana Derricks. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just like, he was talking about this, like, can you serve, find a hundred people who can help you and serve them without any thought of getting mm. anything back? Yeah. And you'll be shocked at what actually flows back your way, yes. you know? And I just went all back in on connections yeah. last year, man. And I've just mm. done nothing but make connections and just look for people who I can help. Like how one way I met Dan, I met him through Aaron Walker, mm -hmm. a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. And I went and I just love Aaron Walker so much. And I got to know Dan and I love him. And I had him on my podcast to just yeah. share him with my audience. Yeah. And um, I was like, man, I just want to help these guys. And I just did a two hour coaching call with them yeah. because, and man, they've 
you talk about coming back. I mean, those guys, mm. man, they are, they live and breathe reciprocity. Oh, so, they do. Yeah, man. So like that, that rolling up your sleeves, getting out there and just yeah. meeting people pandemic or not. Come on now, shake hands and hug. Y'all. Right. We're back. That's right. Right. I, I'm vaccinated. I can do it. Yeah. Um, like just get out there and like make these connections and don't yeah. go at it. Like I want a, other people to help me. Like, what can mm -hmm. I do for other people? Like I had you on my podcast. I don't yeah. know you from Adam until today. And we've had a great time. Yes. Right. Absolutely. So it's, you know, so I mean stuff like that really is the best way to do it. Yeah. Any it, advice on reaching lasts. out to somebody that um, like with Dan, we had a mutual connection, but let's say that, um, you know, pretend Dan Miller, you've never met him. You're not really sure you know anybody that knows him, but you feel like, man, I want to make a connection with him. What's some advice for reaching out to somebody? Not in, in, a, in, not in a weird, creepy way, in a way that they're actually going to notice because guys like Dan get hundreds of emails. Yeah, um, I mean, the, how the do first you... thing, I, I become their customer, period. Uh, yes. I, I go buy their book. I go join their membership. I buy their courses. Uh, right. Like, I, I mean, I got Dan's book sitting on my shelf. It's an important part of my story. Yep, um, me too. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, too. Uh, yeah. Share their stuff on social. Yes. Don't just reach out to them. Like retweet. If you have any kind of audience, share it like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and also to just become a fan. Mm -hmm. like sing their praises like and and yeah. and and implement what they do I, you want me to tell you that how i became uh i i don't know if i when's this gonna come out um uh, in a couple of weeks probably I, I already have one for next week so i can i can put it out whenever you want me to honestly though can, uh, okay, August, let's say this comes out after august 11th okay so that's the be legal then i can talk about this okay all right we can do that so um like i i became friends with pat flynn um, because I'm as I'm a testimonial for him. I, yes. everywhere I go, I, I promise you, I will, every time I speak on a stage, you better believe I'm telling people about Pat Flynn and the smart passive income podcast mm -hmm. because he changed my life. Yes. And, and then he changed my life again when I paid him and became his customer. And then okay. he changed my life again when he had me as a guest, a testimony on his podcast. And then he mm -hmm. became my friend and the dude changes my life on a daily basis. Every time we text each other. Yeah. Right. Wow. And, and, uh, and Pat just asked me, um, this will come out after August 11th. So yes. like, I'm going to say this, like Pat called me about two weeks ago and he's like, Hey man, um, my 500th episode of the smart passive income podcast is coming on. And my team and me unanimously agreed that, uh, we think you should come host the show and, and let me be your guest on SPI. Oh my goodness. And like, but like all, but all, but none of, I never would have thought of, that's not even something I could have imagined being a possibility. Yeah. I just love Pat Flynn. Like I'm getting emotional about it. You yeah. know, like I just love that dude. Yeah. And every, everything I've ever done is just uh, like, he had a live event a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, it was called Flynn con, right? Before, it was yep. 2019. Heard he was having it, saw the announcement. I sent him a text and I said, don't pay me. You don't have to do anything. You just tell us when and what you want us to do. And me and Jocelyn will be on an airplane to San Diego, California to be there for you. Wow. And he had us on stage and we talked and interviewed, he interviewed us on stage and we, mm. not a dime, don't need yeah. it. I'm just, I'm right. still thanking you for everything you've done for me. Absolutely. So that, wow. I would say that is the, the progression that I, you know, it's the people think you're going to read a lot of people books that say, go to these events, say these things, follow these scripts. No, mm. become a fan, become a customer, right. serve them in every way you can put yourself in the places that they are going to be so that you have a chance yep. to meet them when you do. Um, and then don't try to force it. Just do whatever you can to help them. And mm. if, Hey, listen, 90% of the people I've ever met probably will never do a thing for me, but it's the 10% that make the difference. Hey, Ryan Rieger here. If you're looking for proven real strategies for making money online then grab my book streams of income in it, I detail the three main ways to make money online. And these are strategies that students of mine all over the world are using to make real money. And the best part is these are strategies that you can get started with zero dollars and zero experience. So if you'd like a free copy of my book streams of income, check out the link in the description below.